So we're going to continue our presentations and now we're going to talk about uh, the next concept um, after we've discussed the four markets. Now we're going to take a look at how securities are traded. So today's agenda, as you can see from your slide, is that we're going to look at the role of brokerage firms and advisors. Uh, we're going to look at how brokerage firms operate, how to buy and sell uh, some of the securities, especially stocks which are traded in the stock markets, and some of the regulations of the Canadian securities industry or, or Canadian financial markets. And we're also going to talk about short selling and what short sales are near the end of the presentation. So, what are the brokerage firms? What are their roles? Who are they? What happens? Brokerage firms are, uh, as the name implies, people or companies in the middle, brokers. So what happens is they are firms that are in the business of helping investors buy and sell. Because obviously an investor cannot just step into the stock market, let's say a Toronto stock market, and say I would like to buy this and sell this. So you have to go to the broker, the advisor. So the firm that the advisors work for are brokerage firms. Um, and there are many examples of brokerage firms. But before we get into examples, let's talk about the two types. So there, there is a full service brokerage firm and there's a discount brokerage firm. So the full service brokerage firms are the original, the traditional firms where you go into the office of a firm and you see an advisor or a broker and they would advise you on certain types of investments and then you would either buy or sell based on the advice that you have and based on the information that you have collected including the advisor's uh, information. Um, and uh, their main purpose is to provide you with all the info. They may charge you based on the number of hours that they've spent or they may simply charge you a commission based on the amount that you would invest with them or through them to uh, different investments. Uh, traditionally, this has been the only way um, and it is quite expensive for some people, especially for small investors. Uh, but what has happened is because of the advent of the internet, uh, you have now discount brokerage firms. So the discount brokerage firms are simply provide you, they simply provide you with a platform to buy or sell. They do not give you any advice or any information. You can get information from different sources, but they only give you some kind of a platform, a system where you can buy and sell. They charge you based on each transaction. So some examples of full service brokerage firms would be, uh, you know, the uh, the big banks have all have uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, areas. For example, RBCs, RBC Dominion Securities, TD Waterhouse. Uh, so these, Scotia McLeod. Uh, these are all different types of brokerage firms, full service brokerage firms, and. Um, very simply, the discount brokerage firms may be um, E-Trade, TD Waterhouse also has a department for the um, discount brokers, uh, brokerage firm or broker services, and they still call it TD Waterhouse. Um, so how, this is how the, in, the investor would go and buy and sell through, the, through different brokerage firms. What kind of accounts can they open? So brokerage firms, because they traditionally come from banks, they deal very similarly as banks do. So when you go to a bank, you open up an account. And if you need to borrow money, you open up a line of credit or, lo or a loan account. In this case, what happens is if you would like to invest money, you open up a cash account. And if you would like to borrow money from the, the broker or the uh, broker's bank, then you open up a margin account. And if you would like, uh, uh, sorry, a wrap account is a different type of account. So in a wrap account, Instead of, buying, uh, instead of paying for fees every time you buy or sell, they charge you on an annual basis. So they may charge you $2,000 for unlimited buys, unlimited sells, but as long as you stay with them. Um, so cash account is where you would need to put money in up front, and then you can buy and sell using that money that you have put in. And margin account is, as I mentioned, you're borrowing money to buy investments. So the investments are really not yours uh, because you have borrowed money to, to buy those investments, any gain that you hope to make would become yours and then you can return the money that you have borrowed. Um, and um, so the question now comes, how do these people make money? Uh, the investment advisors or the uh, brokers? So we've touched upon it uh, a bit before. So what happens is they can charge um, hourly fees, they can charge 
annual fees or they can charge commissions based on how much money you buy and sell. So a broker cannot be very wealthy if they don't have you know, 200, 300 clients. And you've, you've got to manage these many clients in order for you to generate enough revenue. And a part of that revenue goes to uh, the brokerage firm. So they are not an employee of the firm, they are, uh, they are agents of the firm. And what happens is if they collect, let's say, $200,000 in revenue, um, I'm assuming about you know 20%, 25% of that goes to the, the firm. The rest is yours, but you would also have office expenses. You may need an assistant, you may need uh, you know, uh, office space to rent, and so on. So it is a, a, a competitive business, but it is a, a business where a lot of people prefer because you are self-employed, you manage your own clients. It's very similar to being a lawyer or an accountant uh, where you are a professional with your own set of clientele. You can also make money through uh, another way if you are, uh, a, once you have some experience, a lot of the companies that are going through the IPO process as per our discussion last time, they may would uh, hire some brokerage firms as well to help them sell the initial stocks. So brokers can be, uh, can, can be helpful, or the advisors can be helpful uh, for the IPOs as well. So how do orders work? So in essence, a buyer has, a, has an advisor and a seller has an advisor. So the buyer goes to their advisor, the seller goes to their advisor and asks for this transaction to happen usually based on the advice that the advisor has given them. And the advisor then goes to the uh, market. So they can go to the second market or the third market. Remember the second market is the usual stock market and the third market is the over-the-counter market for the unlisted securities for the small, small companies. So they can go in either direction and then they meet the other persons, the sellers, advisors or brokers. They don't physically meet them, but they meet the demands and they agree on a price, they negotiate the price and, and, uh, and at the end you have a transaction that occurs. Um, and there are three types of orders that the, uh, the brokers can put for you. Market order, limit order and stop order. I won't get into details of this. You can read this on your own. It's very simple. It's just a simple way of uh, stating what kind of an order you would like. Uh, the next slide talks about the regulations of the securities industry, the financial industry. So in Canada, we have a few things that protect the investors. The first and foremost is the provincial regulator. So in, in this case, in our case, we have the Ontario Securities Commission. In Canada, every province has one and there is no federal one. In the U.S., there is only a federal one. So the, in the U.S. it is called the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. In Canada, as I mentioned, uh, uh, every province has one, so Ontario has one, which is called the Ontario Securities Commission. This protects the investor by way of creating regulations and, uh, and uh, uh, policies to minimize frauds and to look at the advisors and brokerage firms and, and so on. Uh, then we have the Canadian Securities Institute, CSI. Um, and this is an educational institute where we, th the advisors are taking courses to become professional advisors. So uh, anyone can take courses. A lot of uh, first year university students also take what we call the Canadian Securities course. Um, Canadian Securities course is very popular among many, many young people and professionals of course. It's the first level course that you take to get some kind of certification in the financial industry. Um, a lot of the course covers the, a lot of the curriculum that we are covering in this course is part of the, the Canadian Securities course. It is not all of it, but it is uh, definitely a big part of it. Uh, then we have the Canadian Investor Protection Fund, the CIPF. This is an, an industry insurance fund. This protects the investors through uh, different kinds of, uh, from different kinds of frauds, and it is funded by the different in, uh, companies that are part of this industry. And then of course we have the investment advisors and investment dealers and investors themselves are trying to protect their own uh, money through different ways. So we will stop it here and we will, uh, next time we will continue uh, this presentation and we'll go into detail with regards to the short sale um, and we'll touch upon the margins but we'll get into uh, detail for short sale. Short sale is a very interesting concept and I hope that when you uh, 
next time when we uh, when you listen uh, to the next part of the, the discussion you will learn a lot from it thank you very much